all of my high school year career except for this year. I used to like stress a lot before I went to bed and then stress a lot when I woke up. Now I don't even feel that anymore, so I don't <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good thing. Well, I was going to say, like, you've passed the point, I guess. Like, yeah. you've gone beyond. Ah. When it says X, does that mean, like, the X part of the table? No, remember, you have to put the, like, the, for example, you have to put the household over 2,534. Yeah. Because that's the total. Oh, okay. That's the thing. Oh, yeah, you have to like multiply all of them. Yeah. And then, I'm still working on this table here. It has a little bit of a round off error. Okay. It to be. I literally wrote that as one of the answers yesterday. Okay, it is legitimate. And now. Then what do we do if we figure out it's legitimate or not? What's right above it? So now you have to find anything. In order to find standard deviation, you have to have the mean. Oh, so you're going to need to calculate the mean. Isn't that the thing that's above it? No. Uh, that, this is finding standard deviation, but remember, it, in this one we had the mean. We found the mean on the page before. Oh, how do you find the mean? Oh, what you're doing. Yeah. X times the probability plus X times the probability. Yeah, like almost Is that it? That's the mean. So now we have to do the x value minus the mean squared times the frequency. The, the probability is the frequency. Oh,
you get the same thing as me? Good, because I was just about to go check and make sure I typed in everything in right. So I was like, I don't know if that's really... Okay, good. That was a little stressful thing. That's a lot, it's a lot of typing, a lot of numbers, and like... to find the variance and the standard deviation. So this number right here is the variance, and this number is the standard deviation. OK. Anybody have questions on that? I mean, most likely, uh, if, you, if your numbers didn't come out the same, it's probably just because you typed something wrong which it's just a lot of numbers to keep track of, which is why um, you wouldn't want to do this for, for something that had a lot of different discrete values. From zero to five is just about enough to do it by hand. Like, I, I actually think that's too much. If I was going to ask you to do it by hand on a test, I might ask you to go zero through three because that's just a lot to keep track of without making a, just making a little error, hitting the wrong button or something. And once it goes off the screen, you know, and you have the little error thing, it's like hard to tell if you've made a mistake. But if we have a larger, if we have larger discrete values than this, let's say we went, it went zero to 10, um, we can always use our calculator. So let's real quick go through the calculator steps. We'll write them down. Um, I, meant, I briefly mentioned it yesterday, but you're gonna hit stat, and stat edit and go to your lists. So we can do it with these same um, with these same data values. So I'm going to write them down real quick. Those steps. So stat. You want your x values in L1 and your probability, your p of x values in L2. Enter, so we're on one variable stats. And then you're going to change your frequency list to L2. So you remember you do a second and two, and that'll put an L2 there. And then calculate. They got the same thing um, for their mean, and then I guess they got something slightly different for their standard deviation, and that's just all about rounding. Because you remember your calculator? So I rounded right here. I rounded to 1.14, and it was really 1.1398, blah, 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 blah. Your calculator holds all of those decimal values in there, and so it doesn't round until the very end when it has to, and so that's the only reason why it's a little bit different. Is everybody good? So if we have a, a table bigger, you'll know. I'll let you know when, when you need to do one by hand and when, when we're going to do one, um, like, not by hand. All right, so next, expected value. There's really just three steps. I don't know why it says four. There's not four steps. There's three. three steps. All right. Calculating expected value. 
you are going to you're going to multiply each outcome by its probability. Then you're going to sum the results of that multiplication. And you're going to inter interpret the results. The interpretation of results in this case, um, that's something we say a lot in statistics, that then you interpret the results because, you know, that's the inferential side of statistics. But in this case, it's actually pretty important because, you'll see in a minute, um, expected value is how we determine whether you're winning or losing something, and how you calculate it depends on whether or not you're talking about you or the house. You know, like if we're talking about a gambling situation and we're talking expected value, you have to interpret the results so we know whether or not the negative is, is, in is referring to you losing or is that the house losing or who's losing. So you have to make sure that you interpret your results in these. You can't just leave the answer, unless it's very, very clear in the question what they mean. Okay, so here we go. It'll make sense, I promise, in a few minutes. All right, so the Olympia High water polo team is selling raffle tickets for $5 each. The prizes are $500, $250, $150, and $50. You buy one ticket. What is your expected gain? All right, so we, we, are, we need our outcomes. So, and then we're going to need our probabilities. And I just realized it didn't say how many tickets were sold, so I'll tell you in just a second. But let's talk about our outcomes first. So the outcomes are, um, you could win $500, but do you really win $500? I mean, no, you do, but you win $545. You win, well, you win 595 like, Yeah. yeah. You, win, you really win 500 but you spent five, so you really only make 495 So that's the big, that's the big win. So that would be a, probably the one that goes in the last column. So that's, I'm going to say that's my big win. I win 495 Or I could win 245 Or 145 or 45, or you don't win at all, that means you are negative five. You've lost five. Those are all the possible outcomes. Now let's just say that, um, a thousand tickets were sold. Okay, so there are one, two, three, four, pro pro blah, 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 four possibilities that you, you can win. So how many possibilities are there that you're going to lose? Uh, 996. Yeah, 996 out of 1,000. So uh, that would be 996 over 1,000. That's the probability that I'm going to lose. As a decimal, that would be 0.996. Now there's only a one out of a thousand chance that I win the each of these because there's only one of each of the prizes. So that's point zero zero one point zero zero one point zero zero one point zero zero one. Okay, so now now that we've got our little table set up, now we can actually do the steps of calculating the expected value. So we're gonna multiply our outcome by our probability. So negative five, negative five times 0.996 plus 45 times 0.001 is 145 times 0.01.
Like the fraction? No, 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 the 4.05? Yep. That is correct. All right, so negative 4.05. And remember, this up here at my outcomes, this is money. So what does that mean? That my expected value came out to be negative 4.05. Are you not going to win anything? You're expected you're going to lose $4. You're expected you're going to lose $4.05. On. How do you lose that when you give $5? How did you not just lose $5? You do just lose $5. Oh, okay. but, but the point is, for every person who plays, the expected value that they're going to lose is $4.05. So when I talked about the interpreting the results, what does that mean for the people selling the raffle tickets? They're getting a profit off of this? Right. For every person who buys a ticket, they're expected to make $4.05, even though they're paying out those prizes. That's their expected value. Each ticket is worth $4.05 to the people selling the raffle yeah. tickets. Mm -hmm. The people buying the raffle tickets, it's, you're going to lose $4.05. So think about it for just a second. If you're calculating expected value, let's say you're going to Carnival and you're playing Carnival games. And you, before you go, you're like, okay, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be smart when I go this time. What are you wanting your expected value to be before you play? Well, positive. I want it to be positive. You would rather be positive. Are there any carnival games out there with a positive? Probably no. no. But the closer it is to positive, then the more likely it is. What would it be for if the game is fair? If the game is considered fair? It's not. Zero. If the expected value comes out to be zero, then the game is considered fair. That means that you and the house have equal chance of winning. Now, expected value isn't just used for gambling. And you'll see in just a minute, we're going to do an assignment um, that's got expected value and probability distribution on it. But it's also used for, this is how they calculate insurance. Insurance is used is expected value. Um, there's some other warranties and stuff like that are also used, they use expected value to calculate whether or not it's profitable for the company and whether or not, you know, if you're trying to figure it out and you have somebody looking at it for you, they're going to look and see which one has a better expected value for you, which would mean a smaller amount. All right, so that's the last page, right? Yes. Or is there another page? Okay, I thought so. I was going to say, because I, I unstapled mine, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that was the last one. All right. So, if you will um, go into Schoology...